This is my review of the Dr. Stone reboot, chapter 7, and... Wow, I, uh... This is like the ultimate troll move that only the creators of Dr. Stone could do. I mean, the main series, you know, they start off the first, like, six chapters with the point of view with a big oaf, and then all of a sudden they switch to saying, okay, now we're, now the main character is Sanku because he's more interesting. Here, they did the exact same thing. They named the freaking series Reboot Byakuya, and now they just literally killed off Byakuya, so the series that's named after him isn't even about him. I mean, just Jesus Christ, that is... That's next level right there, really. Anyway, it's been 20 years since the petrification event, and Ray's looking down to Earth saying, I wonder how things are going. I hope uh, Yaki and everyone got off the island so that's fleeing made back to Japan. In fact, they did not whatsoever. They're still on the island. Well, the living ones still are, which is, you know, just Byaki at this point. He's literally the last of the first people, the last of his kind. And now he's looking down at his freaking grandchildren. That's a weird concept to say. I guess these would be uh, Senku's nieces and nephews by that logic. Weird. Very weird. And he's trying to explain to them in the simplest terms how he lived up in space for a while. I mean, really, how do you explain this to someone who's never even seen a smartphone or a car? Seriously, how do you explain a spaceship to them? I mean, he's basically described as a big house they lived in in space, which, okay, close enough. And he explains to them, oh, no, the robot isn't there. He's definitely dead, 100%. I mean, the big house we lived in probably fell to the earth years ago, and he died along with it. Sad, isn't it? I mean, he has no belief or understanding or even considers the possibility that Ray somehow managed to keep going all this time. Seriously, I think if someone had come up to him and said, oh, yeah, Ray's alive, he went meteor uh, comet farming and brought back a big old chunk of ice, which has been using to power the space shuttle all these years. I don't think he would have believed him. I don't even think he would have considered that, you know, physically possible. We also see the uh, first version of the village's flag. And yes, while it's definitely uh, changed over time, over the countless, countless generations, you can still see the uh, remnants of it here, the how it started off as this and how it changed over time to eventually become the flag we know today. Anyway, then he goes off to collect gold and platinum because, as he says, as a guy who's been to space and back, that's my mission, to pass down to the future. Anyway, then we flash back over to Ray, and uh, things are not going great for him because the uh, solar cells on the space station have broken, the computers have stopped functioning, and the entire thing is basically falling to pieces. Thankfully, humanity has littered space with literally thousands upon thousands of satellites, which he can basically use to repair and upgrade anything that might break. I mean, sooner or later, things are definitely going to fall apart on him, and all the spare replaced parts will also have broken from solar radiation or whatever, but but for this foreseeable future, he has enough uh, spare parts to last him quite a while. And to harvest those satellites, he sends out the Autonomic Spaceship Regilian Type R Deploy. I mean, literally, spaceships that he can control from a distance or just has pre-programmed to go out, get the satellites, and come back. Either way, that's pretty freaking awesome. Is definitely, definitely confirming my theory that we do end up seeing him in the distant, distant future. He's going to have, like, a whole army of robots at his disposal. Oh, and then he upgrades his brain from uh, 600 cell phones to 3,000 cell phones strong. So, yeah. I'm actually a little terrified just imagining how smart he's going to end up becoming. Anyway, then we flash forward another 22 years, and Fiak is on his last leg, as he says, when Ray realizes, wait a minute, they might think uh, something happened to me. I need to let them know I'm okay. I need to let everyone down on Earth, because I'm sure all my old friends are still alive after 42 years, because I don't understand the concept of human age or death, really. So I'm going to send a signal to them, let them know I'm all right. And then the Yakia falls to the ground, the great hero, the great last astronaut the Earth has ever known, or will ever know for another 3,000 years, falls to the water, and he accepts his death. But then in his final moments, in his last seconds on Earth, he sees the se signal. He sees the light that Ray is lit, and he realizes that Ray is still alive, that he is still up there, still believing in Byakuya, and in the <laughs> promise that he made to come back, and he's overwhelmed by a sense of guilt for lying to him, and 
and just happiness that his friend is not only still alive, but still pushing forward, still waiting for them. <sighs> They've done so much to try to keep the space shuttle safe for him to return to. And thus, the last astronaut meets his end. While well, Vareg promises himself that every day when they pass over Tokyo, he will relight the signal. He will let everyone know that he is still up there, still waiting for them to come back. Sad. Though, once again, I am just so curious if he is still up there, if he's still alive somehow, if he's still managed to, you know, just farm parts for long enough to keep going. I mean, I think he'd probably have better luck if he's had, like, a permanent base on the moon or something. I mean, Byakuya, I mean, Ray set this up so that everyone in Tokyo would be able to see the light when he passed over, so... Senko and the gang should have been able to see it from, you know, their other island, Ishigami Village, from over there, and they would be like... That's weird. There's a big bright light that shows up every day for all of history. That shouldn't be. So I think at some point he would have stopped the light, would have stopped the beacon. Because he would have either moved on or gone somewhere else or done something else. I'm not sure. I mean, it's also possible the beacon is, for some reason, only visible from this village. And Senko and the gang just haven't, like, looked up at night yet, so they haven't seen it. Seriously, though, if the next chapter of Dr. Stone has them, you know, looking up in the night sky and seeing a light twinkle, I will lose my goddamn freaking mind. <sighs> because that means that Ray is still out there 3,000 years later, and still trying to let his friends know that he's still there waiting for their return. But yeah, this was an utterly heartbreaking chapter. I mean, I literally didn't think that uh, Byakuya's death could get any sadder. I mean, I cried my first read the chapter where he died, and I saw the amount of work he put into finding the gold and platinum for future generations, they would be safe, they would be... So they would have what they needed to start up the next generation, to restart humanity. But now knowing that his last thought, his very last thought in this world, was realizing his friend was still out there waiting for him, it just makes it so much more heartbreaking. But yeah, let me think about all that down below. Uh, did you cry this chapter? I did a little bit. Do you think Ray is still out there? Do you think Ray is the Y man? I'm... Getting more and more convinced of it because, you know, now that Byaki is gone, literally the rest of the reboot, whatever, however long this is going to be, is going to be about Ray, about how he started up a new civilization, how he managed to continue living after so long. I, like I said, I feel like eventually he'd have to run out of usable parts just because they'd break down over time on their own from the solar radiation or whatever. But if he's still alive, he's still kicking. He's. I can't even begin to fathom the amount of power, intelligence, and just a robot of, just army of robots he's managed to build in that time. But yeah, just let me think of all that down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, see you on the next video. Until then, peace.